everybody. Welcome back to the Routine Podcast. Gymnastics Conversations. I'm Chelsea. And I'm Chelsea's mom, Diana. And we're back for episode 35. Hello, everybody. Hi. So we um, did a little teaser. I think we're getting back into the groove slowly but surely here. But as you said, it's episode 35. And um, I've done my homework. Well, today's topic is... I'm jumping, jumping. Uh, yeah. <laughs> She's just so excited, guys. She's <laughs> got to tell us her opinions. I, well, I did my homework. I, I'm, I'm ready. Golf clap for mom, everybody. <laughs> oh, that, that was? I was wondering what that was. <laughs> oh, a golf clap. I've never seen that before. But it's what you said. Now that I have a little bit more time on my hands, I have time to like do homework. No excuses. Be prepared. Yes. So, did I already say we're talking about freshmen, new recruits? You did not. Well, we're talking about freshmen, new recruits, transfers. There are quite a bit of new people in NCAA gym this season, which is really exciting. Yeah, plus the list you gave me, to me, was surprising in terms of the number of freshmen that some teams have, the quality of talent that some teams received, and really the lack of movement that some teams have too in terms of new recruits. So very yeah, interesting. It definitely was not balanced across the board. I think the team with the most freshmen, again, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, Georgia, mm-hmm. nine out of the 14 people on the team are freshmen. Wow. But I don't think that is surprising, right? Because Georgia with Courtney and Suzanne, it was you know, kind of brand new last year in terms of, and it it was right at the beginning of the season that it happened. And you always said, Chelsea, almost on every show when we talked about Georgia, you said this was their kind of beginning season. The future is bright. Exactly. And let's watch what happens with the new recruits. Well, there you go. Side note, Courtney Kupetz Carter is very pregnant. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah. I don't know when she's due, but I'm sure it's going to be around the time that season starts. So season. does she take maternity leave? Yes. As a mother, she does. Yeah, I hope she does. As a mother, she does. She deserves it. And Suzanne's there. <laughs> but she's volunteer. <laughs> but I'm sure she know. wouldn't mind stepping in <laughs> as say? head coach. Does <laughs> Suzanne really ever volunteer? <laughs> I'm sure she does, Mom. I'm sure she does. But yeah, that's a good point to bring up. When teams saw new faces, there were a lot of new faces. But when teams didn't see new faces, it wasn't like, okay, three or four. It was like one in the case of LSU. Yeah. They have one new recruit, and she's not starting until January, which is really interesting because she actually wasn't supposed to start until next year. Yeah, that's just all weird for me. Can you help? And you call that early recruit? Is that what you call that? I don't know what the formal term for it is, but basically if teams need a recruit early, they'll ask them to graduate from high school a semester early so that they can join the team at the start of season. Wow. Do you agree with that philosophy? Um, I think it depends on the person. Like a lot of former elites have done that, but they also probably were homeschooled or tutored. Mm-hmm. So they're not really missing out on that high school experience where they get prom and graduation and kind of those milestone events. But I think as like a normal teenager, I would want to experience those things. I think so too. I mean, and I think your comparison is really good that if you're an elite, you know, there's a 12 month schedule and whether you start in month one or month six or month eight, it's almost irrelevant. Versus if you are a high schooler, there are milestones. Um, but again, it's not uncommon. A lot of big name gymnasts have done that. And at the same point, if Dee Dee Bro calls my phone saying, <laughs> hey, we need you at the start of season, it's kind of hard to say no. I'm sure it is. But also think about, you know, we ha- we've had episodes about just the pressure, you know, this collegiate pressure that happens not just with freshmen but with all gymnasts and we've also talked about the importance of academics right so imagine that instead of starting in the fall and kind of slowly transitioning into a new school into your classes into dorms into new friends that come January you start and you start in the gym and you start at competition 
That's a good point. Yeah. So if Dee Dee did call you, right, I agree with you. But I, as your mother, I'm really thinking all that. Because at that point, the team has been through preseason together, which always is like a really big team bonding experience. So everybody kind of has their group of people that they know. And then you're coming in kind of, there's just like this new person that has to gel with the team that's already gelled. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure it's not an easy situation to be in. And college, like college is a big transition for everyone if you're a student athlete or not. Yeah. And chances are that because you're coming in early, you're going to be in the lineup. Maybe. That's not always a given, but you're probably good if they want you to come early. That's right. And so now we've got that added pressure that you would now have to perform. Yeah. So again, I know if Didi, now if Didi called, I'm going to talk to Didi. <laughs> yeah. Didi, I'm her mama. <laughs> you go talk to me. <laughs> so we're going to start with that. And if Sarah talked (laughs) oh yeah all sarah has to do is just ask sarah finnegan by the way as a reminder mom loves sarah finnegan also she's a senior this This year last year for sarah yeah yeah that'd be fun to watch her this year in her senior year it's interesting that that that's what happens do you think that's becoming more commonplace I, i mean i wouldn't say it's more common it's just a thing that happens but what I'm finding, especially in LSU's case, is that because they did the same thing with Christina Desiderio. Okay. I think that's how you say her name. Mm-hmm. And so you're kind of digging yourself in a hole whenever you do that because you're recruiting, you're taking. You're changing the cycle. Yeah, exactly. Because how do you get out of that at mm-hmm. that point? You're just going to keep pulling people before they're actually supposed to be here. Right. Wow. So it's interesting. But yeah, so LSU, Bailey Ferrer, she will be joining the team. She's a great gymnast, so excited to see how she's going to add to the lineup. But let's go back to Georgia, since they have one of the largest freshman class coming in. Nine Uh, recruits. Yeah. Nine out of 14 people on the team are freshmen. Wow. And they're good. They are? Yeah. Wow. Rachel Bauman who was the sister of Alyssa Bauman, <laughs> which is pretty exciting. I know both of them just have beautiful lines and are graceful gymnasts, which I personally appreciate. I love that style of gymnastics. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And a lot of them are really great bar workers. And that's always a good thing when you have a lot of good people on a certain event that just pushes people to be better. You know what I find interesting about it is that was Courtney's event. Bars. Bars. Uh, I wouldn't say that. It was. All of her well, that's events true. were her events. That's true. That's true. She was good on everything. She was good on everything. But I just remember her bars just flying through the air. It was like she was just swinging on right. the playground. Exactly. I just remember her hop full. And then I think she went to immediate Takacha. And then she would do the double layout dismount and stick it every time. <laughs> Courtney, come back to gymnastics. <laughs> Even though you're about to push out a baby, come back to First gymnastics. Of all, we don't say push out a baby. <laughs> come back to gymnastics. <laughs> um, I think we got to talk about Florida. We got to talk about Florida. This one was the one. Georgia didn't surprise me. Georgia made complete sense. Yeah. LSU surprised me when mm-hmm. there was like one name on the list that you sent. Florida surprised me. Now, how did that happen? How did they get so many good recruits? Well, who did they... They lost Kennedy. Alex. Alex. I mean, they were kind of all-arounders, but it, that doesn't garner what they brought in. I know. And which is interesting because Florida, I feel like, usually the teams that have been like doing like remarkable for like the past couple of years get like the best recruits. Not that Florida hasn't been doing great, but they've been like... Okay. Right. They've been in the top four, top five, but not the very, very top. Right. Like when they were with Bridget Sloan. Yes. Or like they were with Keetra Hunter. That's true. (laughs) Or when they had Bridget and Keetra. Yeah. But the class that they brought in is just crazy. I think I'm a Florida fan. Based on the list that you sent me, it's not that I'm a Florida fan, because of course I'm always going to be an LSU fan, but my mind goes is... Who's going to win the championship? And I know we've got a whole season to go, 
but you still got Oklahoma out there. Mm -hmm. You still got UCLA out there, which we'll talk about them. Mm -hmm. But Florida. I know. And, well, first, top of the list, Trinity Thomas. Yeah. Let me just say it again. First, (laughs) top of the list, Trinity Thomas. And I know a lot of of our followers have been – saying watch out for trinity can't wait for trinity like they're already calling her the champion not that we're putting pressure on her or anything but everything she does she's very like uh light and airy Mm -hmm. and everything she does just looks easy for her well you sent me a couple of links but i didn't see her on all the events she's that good on all the events yes every event she's really really good on do you know where she came from i think she's from Pennsylvania. Okay. She's on the national team. And when did she choose Florida? When you said people would say, watch for Trinity Thomas, when did she choose Florida? That's a really good question. She was actually very late in the recruiting process. She was. Because she's actually a diver. No. Yeah. She's a really good diver. I think she won like regionals or states. She in does diving. both? Yeah. Well, she did in high school. I'm sure she doesn't now. No, but she did both diving. I mean, people. And always... she was good at it. It wasn't just like a thing she did. She was. She won. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How cool is that? I mean, people say that the you know there are a lot of similarities between the two sports in terms of body position and knowing what your body's doing and what you're asking your body to do. Now, once you hit the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. It's, it's different at that point. I'm just reading. It says Trinity. Lamyra Thomas is an American gymnast, three-time national team member, member of the gold medal winning team at the 2018 Pan American Gymnastics Championship, where she won silver medals in the individual all-around and on bars. Trinity. She's good. And she's gorgeous. Yeah. And I, I feel like I sound like kind of I'm jumping on the bandwagon whenever I say I'm a Florida fan. But I just like good gymnastics. You yeah, know? She, that's true. <laughs> now, you and I are different in that way, right? At the end of the day, you choose the team that you believe performs the best gymnastics. I am the emotional value, right? And then I kind of stick with it. It's like our your brother, my son. He's a Wizards fan. And for those who watch basketball, <laughs> it hurts to be a Wizards fan. Yeah, they're not very good. Ever. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's been like decades. (laughs) Decades. But every year, my son's like, the Wizards. Gotta watch the game. And yeah, he's watching every game. And every time about that third or fourth quarter, he's disappointed, right? (laughs) And, and, you know, he's just kind of moping around as if, you know. And so I'm kind of the same way. I'm like emotionally connected. You are just like, what's the best team out there based on the performance? And that's who you like. Yeah. But I feel like... I kind of earn that. I do too. Because I'm not just picking who I know is going to win. I'm not that type. I'm like, I understand why they're good. Yeah. And how they're different than other teams. And what's going into it in terms of making them great. And so, again, I, I agree with that. I think you are seeing it at a deeper, more important level than people who aren't gymnasts like myself see it. So that's all I have to hold on to is the emotional value. <laughs> yeah. So after Trinity, there's also Sydney Johnson Scarf, who was also a national team member. Um, Savannah showing her. I don't know. I'm sure I didn't say that right. But she's also a really great gymnast. I think she was one of the ones that had a triple full. She's also great on bars. So Florida has like a lot of elite gymnasts, which I I know we can't count on. We've seen a lot of gymnasts enter NCAA and things just don't pan out for them. Um, So we'll see how it goes. So does Savannah's triple replace Alex's triple? No. (laughs) No one will replace Alex McMurtry's triple full. There's just, just, this just doesn't happen. But I love triple full, so she's right. She's right under Alex. Jesse, you were close to being able to do a triple full. This is not about me, Mom. I know. I just <laughs> I have to relive in the moment. You were. Now, would you agree with that? If I were to like go back in a gym and actually train, I think that would be the first skill I would want to learn. Yeah, because you were a good two and a half. I was. Yeah, I was pretty good at twisting. Yeah, you were a twister. You yeah. were not a flipper. I mean, when you're five eight, it's kind of hard to flip 
around. <laughs> it's like the legs are like still behind. Yeah. Come on, come on. But also Naya Reed. She's very powerful. And she's a Maryland girl. Really? Yeah. As in from Maryland or University of Maryland? She's from the state of Maryland. Oh, okay. I gotta look her up while you're talking. Yeah. So she, I think she has a really strong double layout. She also does a one and a half twist on vault. So, and that's the other thing. I know this isn't about like teams and what skills they're doing, but as I've seen videos posted on social media, people are really starting to chase after that 10 start value because they see how valuable it is. And whenever it comes down to scores at meets, it really does matter what start values are. So I see teams, even the lower ranked teams, they're pushing for one and a half on vault and doubles on vault. It's that time, isn't it? Yeah. Which is cool to see because they're taking that risk. So you know there's an official website for Naya Reed. <laughs> it does. Really? Mm-hmm. The official website of Naya Reed. She was born in 2000 in Norfolk. And Dang, I'm old. I know. Well, I'm older. <laughs> but yeah, so it goes through all the things. that It talks about her elementary school days. Yeah, wow. she's got a whole website. Go, Naya. She trained at Capital Gymnastics National Training Center. That's in Northern Virginia. Mm-hmm. That's a really good gem. Is it? I've heard. Produces like, they're very... Regimented? Yeah. Well, they know what they're doing. And then it's already now talking about Naya um, from Landover, Maryland, all around. And she's already on the Florida Gator website. <laughs> Congratulations, Naya. Yeah, I'm excited to see that. I think we talked enough about Florida. Yes, I think so too. But I do think it's what you said. It's uh, going to be a, the team to watch this year. Maybe they're all freshmen, so it's you just going to be the team. Yeah, but to watch you just don't year. know how freshmen work under pressure. The college scene is different than elite. It is, but I think through most recent history, the freshmen have performed. Do you have any examples? Yeah, Christine Desiderio. She performed well. She did. Um, Do you have anyone outside of LSU? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. This is the real test, guys. <laughs> okay, let me think. Um, Oklahoma. You're yeah, actually, so you're actually right. Okay. Anastasia Webb. Mm -hmm. She was a freshman that definitely, definitely, definitely performed. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, it's You know what I think, Chelsea, and you obviously can correct me if I'm wrong, that it's almost like college prep that there's a little bit more preparation from clubs about getting gymnasts prepared for college. So, so you think clubs specifically train like their senior gymnasts for these pressure situations? I do. And so whether it's the clubs doing it purposefully or the gymnast making sure that the clubs are helping them be prepared. I That's actually very true. Like in, in my time, <laughs> if you will. Back in the day? Back in the day. My my teammates who were in the same class as me in club, there were a lot of us who were going off to college and competing in college. And so my coach kind of made it a fact to train as if we were in college gymnastics. So we did a lot of pressure sets. And he also, I don't know if you remember, but the meet schedule, he did it as if we were in college. Yes. So we did a lot of meets back to back and we were traveling all over the country so that he could prepare us for these college situations where we're going to be on an airplane every weekend traveling to meets because he knew that all of us were going to college and this was going to be our lives. Exactly. Exactly. So, and I think for, you know, the gymnast that's paid off, I also think that's, you know, full circle makes you really think about again, the LSU situation where people are coming in in January without that kind of time that's needed for the transitioning mm -hmm. we'll see um i think it's time to talk about ucla it is it's always time in your mind <laughs> to talk about ucla are we going to talk about them winning the championship no <laughs> this is new season can't dwell on the past but they are the 2018 national champions in case you guys forgot you know and i don't know if we ever talked ahead of podcast since we learned about miss val right i know yeah Miss Val is retiring. This yeah. is her last year. Yeah. Were you expecting that? I was. What? I was. Why? Because she's been grooming Jordan. I know it hasn't been decided yet, right? And think about it. And Miss Val is an incredibly smart woman. 
what better time to leave than after you won than after you've won the championship she's gonna be finishing with kate kato hashi mm-hmm. which is wonderful yeah it's sad though it is sad it's the end it, of an era it is but it's a whole season before yeah we have to think about that but imagine I just, the videos that are gonna come out of this and you're gonna send me every single one of them so please don't <laughs> no i'm going to i know but please you have just, time now remember <laughs> <laughs> i do <laughs> But I don't have, I mean, I obviously love Miss Val, but emotionally, I don't want to see all the videos of Miss Val leaving. It's okay. I'll email them to you. <laughs> <laughs> but Nora Flatley, she also was a national team member for years. She was a really great elite gymnast. She's actually from Chow's, Sean Johnson and Gabby Douglas's old gym. I'm very excited to see what she can offer to UCLA. And she is a wonderful performer. And she has always, just, especially recently, she's been talking about UCLA and how she can't wait to join the team. And that's the other thing about UCLA. It's like these gymnasts that are coming in, they know what they're about to enter into. And Mm so emotionally on that side, they're just so ready to be a part of such a great organization sure and do you see based on the new recruits for ucla that it's that same personality the go with the flow have some fun yeah can you tell yet i can tell especially in terms of mark zetta she has always been bubbly and bringing out her personality and who's mark zetta because we didn't talk about that at all mark zetta frazier also national team member she went to Parquettes. She's fresh off of the elite scene as well. Wow. So she has the big skills. Mm-hmm. What um, are some of the big skills? She has a double flow on vault. Wow. Okay. She does a full in double pike off beam. Wow. Yeah. So she's oh, there. She's going to be fun to watch. She's an awesome dancer. Again, she has the personality. But back to your question, I don't know if they have the personality before they get into UCLA or because of the environment they're in, it's hard not to have that personality. I think it's the former that they have the personality and they know based on my personality, this is the right school for me. Maybe. I mean, with UCLA, it's so completely different than the rest that you really have to know that that's what what, you're getting into. That's what I need. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I want. Yeah, because other than that, you could really make a wrong decision. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you just won't fit in. Right. (laughs) You could get sick of the girls really easily. (laughs) Right, when they're dancing and you're like you're not. You want to be serious. (laughs) That's very true. But yeah, UCLA is going to be a great team. I believe Mark Zetta would be an all-arounder, but then again... UCLA lineups, you really just can't predict. You don't, because they're (laughs) deep in the individual events. Yes. So we'll see. And I'm excited for UCLA, as always. Yeah. You can't not be. Well, it would be great to have a second championship. Yeah. And it would be great because Oklahoma wasn't planning to lose last year. (laughs) Well, no one plans to lose. (laughs) And they were most surprised by it. Yeah. And you've got all these new Florida amazing gymnasts coming in. That's going to be crazy. It is. Like, actually. Those three teams. And there's more. Like, Georgia could be like... Yeah. LSU basically has the same team. So, you know, all of their freshmen last year... I'm so excited, Chelsea. Oh, Sakai. Right. Sorry. She's also at UCLA. She's really strong on vault and floor and another great dancer. So I know Miss Val is happy about all these wonderful dancers on her team. I just have one quick question. So you said Florida is going to be kind of where you think you're leaning. In terms of what, though? I think you kind of said fan. Yeah, I'm a fan. But what about UCLA? That's really your, your team. I don't know. I just have to see how I feel whenever I watch the teams. I'll always pull for UCLA. Always. (laughs) I mean, no question about it. Okay. But I'm excited to watch Florida. Like, their meets I'm going to be tuning into every week. Yeah. I know that. 
Um, Oklahoma has Olivia Troutman. She is also very good on vault and floor, which I think for Oklahoma is always a great thing because if a team is powerful but also graceful and technical with beam and bars, obviously that's the best combination you can have. For Oklahoma, I don't think they lost any superstars on their team. So again, they're just kind of refining the team that they had last year, which was a very good team. (laughs) (laughs) So they'll only be better. Right. And what year is Maggie now? I think she's a junior. She's a junior. Wow. Which is crazy. I know. She was just a freshman. I know. Alabama. I'm actually pulling for Alabama. I know. They've been going through it the, the past couple Crimson of years. Crimson Tide. Come like, on. I'm not a fan, but I want them to do well. I agree with that. They've had enough unhappiness. Yeah. Enough struggles. Enough. They need to be on the upswing. That's right. And, it, you know, they kind of did the way of Georgia, where Georgia kind of had kind of that rough time. It's Alabama's time now, too. You have to go through the hard times to appreciate the good times. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where Kiana, the team with Kiana, right? She graduated. She did? Yeah. Oh. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy, and that's not good for Alabama. Well, they brought in Shallon Olson, who actually won vault silver at the world championships. Ooh, okay, that's at good. At Worlds last okay, month. Okay, Shallon, that's great. Yeah. That's a great recruit to get. And I'm sure she's good on other events as well. Absolutely. Um, and Emily Gaskins, who was also an elite athlete, and she's great. And I think she's an all-rounder. So hopefully they're all just coming together, working hard. Because yeah. I know they're great. And then lastly, Utah. Utah. Who always seems to be just like plugging away on the West Coast, in the mountains, to on me, their own. And tell me if I'm wrong. To me, they're like the scrappy team, man. They're just like pulling it. No? What do you mean by that? They're the ones that are just... While everybody else is watching Oklahoma and watching UCLA and doing all this, they're just in the mountains doing it. (laughs) Yeah, that's very true. Like, if you're in Utah, in Salt Lake City, like, I'm sure the Utes are, like, the thing. And everybody is aware. But, like, once you kind of are in the nation of college (laughs) gymnastics, they seem to, like, be forgotten about, which they shouldn't be it makes no sense yeah because they're good they're amazingly talented yeah and um they and get they like have... fifteen thousand people at all of their home meets so and they have michaela i know <laughs> game on michaela <laughs> yeah who's always ready for a competition <laughs> and she's a junior as well this year yeah, yeah she came in with maggie yep exactly so Crystal Issa, I think that's how you say her name. Or Issa. Issa. She's on the list because she does some interesting, unique gymnastics. Okay. So on beam, her dismount is a back handspring gainer one and a half. Oh, wow. Do you know what that is? Uh, no, but it sounds impressive. So you know the gainer off the beam, off okay. the side and of the And that's what the dismount you would do? Yeah, but that's usually only a full twist. Okay. Well, she does the back handspring gainer. So out of a back handspring, she swoops her foot up the side of the beam. Oh, wow. Okay. And then she does a one and a half twist. Versus one. Yeah, and sticks it. Ooh. Which is very hard. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> but she does it very well. Okay. And then also her bars dismount. She does a giant fool immediately into her double A out and sticks it. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we got to watch Crystal. Yeah. One thing I do want to bring up, which is kind of interesting, is that Marilyn... Marilyn, over the past two or three years, has had at least two people transfer. Two or from? From Marilyn. Oh. Out. That's not good. Yeah, it's not. And that's, especially in gymnastics, transferring is not very common. And just because we're in Marilyn, you know, we just had that tragedy with the football team in Marilyn. So there may be some things going on in Marilyn that we're just not aware of. Yeah, do you guys know, or does anybody have the insights into why gymnasts are transferring from Maryland to other teams? Yeah. So let us know what new freshmen or transfer athletes you're looking forward to watching. Maybe you have a team in your area that got a transfer or a new freshman that you're really excited to watch. We definitely didn't touch upon every team, but... We are always wanting to learn who we should be looking out for whenever we watch meets this year. 
So reach out to us. Tell us. Get involved. <laughs> join the conversation. <laughs> well, and I think, too, on an upcoming episode, we can share the comments that we hear. But I also think it's probably time to talk to Mary and Jason about the numbers. You know, we, we act like our, they're our neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Mary and Jason. <laughs> um, those are the duo that created the Road to Nationals website. And again, if you haven't had the chance to visit that website, we highly encourage it. But their website is very much data driven. And so it's interesting to me to find out how they look at incoming freshmen and are, is there anything special that they do on the website to help give us data about these incoming freshmen? Yeah. And this is a really helpful topic for those of you who do fantasy gymnastics during season. It's kind of a one-stop shop to learn about these new faces and who you should add to your lineup. So any way that we can help you guys, we hope we can do that for you. And I'd also love to have a similar episode or just discussion about the incoming freshmen for the NAIGC too. That would be fun. Again, you know, you talk about fantasy gymnastics. We talk about NCAA. We're all things gymnastics here. So is there similar conversations where people are getting excited about who's coming in for NAIGC? Division three, division two. Yeah. So we got it's all gymnastics. Yeah. So that's what we should do in an upcoming episode. But reach out to us on Twitter at routine podcast. Um, you can email us at info at the routine podcast.com or you can visit our website, the routine podcast.com, where you can leave us a voicemail. All the things that Chelsea talked about that we'd love to hear from you. There is a microphone. You scroll down to the bottom of the page, click the microphone, and leave us your voicemail message. We'd love to hear your excitement about the upcoming season and your thoughts. I think at some point we're going to ask the question, not yet though, who do you think is going to win the championship? That this is year? one of the topics on <laughs> think, an upcoming episode. It needs to be. And we and people got to put their chips down now. They yeah. Can't. It's got to be before the first meet. I agree. It was another great episode, Mom. Thank you, Chelsea. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.